so welcome to the um, first of our Arnett uh, Winter Researcher Talk series um, in 2021. Um, last year we did um, do some sessions as we were um, jumping into, you know, as we all got started to get um, isolated as the pandemic hit. Um, these ones this year, and, and those ones were more sort of panel sessions, these ones this year we really want to highlight um, some of the researchers that we've come across that are using uh, Cloud Store and Arnett services in an innovative way. And we, and we want to kind of, um, you know, uh, show everyone what they're doing and, and help that guide our strategy. Um, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge um, that this week is uh, Reconciliation Week. Um, and so I'd like to acknowledge and celebrate the first Australians on whose traditional lands that we all meet today. Um, I'm on Ngunnawal land. I'm based in uh, Ngunnawal country. I'm based in Canberra. Um, and I'd like to pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Um, okay, so today um, we've got our first of a series of four um, winter um, researcher talks. And we're lucky enough today um, to have uh, Dr. Robert Luke, um, now we came across um, Robert, uh, I think it was last year or the year before, and we noticed that he was excessively using um, one of our um, uh, features in Cloud Store Swan, which is the Jupiter Notebooks. And so we reached out to him to find out what he was doing. And it's such a great story um, and a great application. So I'll tell you a little bit about Dr. Luke. He did his undergraduate degrees in electrical engineering and physics at Melbourne University. He then completed his PhD in cognitive neuroscience in Belgium, where he used um, behavioural and neuroimaging methods to understand how the brain processes sounds in users of cochlear implants. He's also worked in industry as a fabulous semiconductor, fabulous semiconductor manufacturer, wow, developing audio algorithms. Dr. Luke currently works in the Department of Ingu Linguistics at Macquarie University, where they are studying how people perceive their acoustic environments and the neural processes involved. Um, Dr. Luke's going to give us a presentation now, um, and then we'll have plenty of time um, for questions at the end. We expect we might be able to get away um, a bit before the end of the hour so everyone can get ready for their next Zoom meeting. Um, but um, please put any questions in the chat um, and use the chat to um, talk to your colleagues who are present. Um, and we uh, over to you, Dr. Luke. So I thought I would just run through um, an example experiment that um, that we have and, and sort of highlight uh, where we use the different sort of cloud store tools along the way. So um, this is my cloud store home. And, uh, and so I assume everyone's familiar with this. This is all the files. And each one of these directories here is a different experiment, which um, I manage or own. And then there's also projects that I'm associated with in the shared folder. Um, <clears throat> And today I just um, made an example experiment, which I'll run through in a tick. Um, I'm probably not gonna talk much about the science. I mean, like a little, I will a little bit, just so you know what's happening. Um, but, you know, I'll try and focus more on, on the tools and the steps that we take. Um, and so, so I normally, some, some experiments I do by myself and others, mainly most experiments I collaborate with other people. Um, and so normally the first thing I would do would be to um, share this directory with my collaborators, um, one of who I can see on the, um, the, the list now. So maybe I'll, I'll do that. So, um, so Maureen is on, on the call. And so I would normally share that with her first and it should pop up with her name. There we go. So then, um, and I would do that for each person that I'm, that I'm collaborating with on this particular project. Um, and then, so if we go into the, into the experiment, um, we normally, um, we structure our experiments, um, so that all the code lives in a folder called code. And, um, and we normally have a little readme at the top. So, um, that sort of summarizes the, the example experiment. So, um, so you might have noticed I'm doing everything in the browser at the moment. So that's the kind of the whole point, right? So this is all being run on cloud store. Um, so you can view files like this. So this is um, just a little readme 
overview of the experiment. So when I come back in nine months, I can actually remember what I was doing. And, um, and you can edit this as well. So you, you have these nice, you can have, it, have the, the text on the side, which you can edit. Um, and then you can see the rendered example on the right hand side. Um, and so, and then we normally keep all of our code in this code folder. Um, and, and that's normally where I stop using this files um, kind of view and I, and I move over to, to Swan here. So I would normally open up another tab with Swan um, and it's loading up now. So Swan is a Jupyter notebook. Um, so that can run either Python or R code or there's this Octave and C++, which I don't use. Um, and we normally break all of our sort of neuroimaging experiments into a sort of standard kind of order um, of which things are done. So uh, normally the first thing we do is collect the data and then um, we'll upload that to cloud store and then inspect it and make sure that it's uploaded correctly, but also that the measurement was taken correctly, that the machine was plugged in, for example, or, um, and then we'll convert that data to a standard format for analysis later on. And then we'll normally do some signal processing um, and then some statistical analysis at the end. So that's sort of, I mean, every project's different, but that's sort of the, the normal breakdown of the steps. And sometimes I will be each person in that chain. So I'll collect the data and analyze it and do the stats. And in other projects, um, you might have a different person doing each step. And in some projects, I'm actually not doing any of them and I might just be overseeing it, but it's still useful to be able to be able to log in and be able to check what's, what's going on at each step. Um, so what I'm gonna do for the rest of the presentation is just walk through each of those steps one by one and, and how we do that, with these tools. So the first step is always collecting data and I'll go back to files for this. Um, and so um, we always put out the raw untouched data um, in a place called source data. And that's meant to be the data exactly as it was and it will never be touched. Um, so you can always go back to that should anything go wrong. Um, and sometimes um, if I'm, if I'm collecting the data, I can just log on to my own cloud store account and, and drag these up in the web interface. Um, or you can press this upload button here. Um, that also works if you're collaborating with someone in Australia who's got a university account, like I just shared it with Maureen before. So she would be able to log into her account and upload data here. Um, but sometimes you collaborate with um, someone who's either not at a university or might be overseas. And in that case, I've used this file sender tab here and I can give them a link and they can upload data and then I can put it in the right folders. Um, so that's the sort of the, the, the different ways we've been getting data um, onto Cloud Store. The other way that um, some, some of my students have preferred is to use the syncing tool. So up on the top right up here, I've got the Cloud Store sync tool set up um, and then what I can do is um, you can edit these things in your on your computer and it will sync it up. So you could just drag and drop your files um, here and then it will get a little green tick once it's synced up to the cloud. So they're the kind of the different ways that we get our data up um, and they work differently depending on the, the tools and, and the experiment and who you're working with. Um, so once data is uploaded, and it's living in that uh, source data directory. Then we got come across to Swan and whoever's uploading the data will then um, check that the measurement is okay. Um, but before we do that, sorry, I'll give you a bit more background. So this little basic experiment here, um, what it's just a, a token experiment with five people in it that we're gonna analyze today. And it has three conditions. It has a control condition and um, two conditions where someone's tapping with their right hand or they're tapping with their left hand. And um, it's a neuroimaging experiment and the, the technique we're using is called functional near infrared spectroscopy. And that's measuring the concentration of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood in your brain. And you expect to get um, an, 
increase in oxygenated blood when there's neural activity happening. So in the motor cortex, when you're tapping, you would expect an increase in neural activity and you would get a, de um, a decrease in deoxygenated blood, which is indicated by the blue line here. So that's kind of the 20 second background of this example experiment. Um, and so the first thing uh, you do when the swan boots up is um, I've ordered these scripts here from zero to five. Um, so you have to install the packages. So we normally just have a little script here, which you can run, which will install all the relevant packages. Uh, and so we're going to use both Python and R notebook. So there's two different um, scripts here to install the relevant packages. And so um, this is a Jupyter notebook. Um, there's, there's text up the top, and then there's also little code blocks here. And so um, if, a, if a new, someone I'm collaborating with for the first time logs on, they'll open up this toolbox and they would, um, they can either run each block one by one by pressing this play button and then it would install the, the packages that are required. Or you can just hit um, this uh, run all cells and it would install everything. And I did that in advance because it just takes a couple of minutes. Um, and so here we're just, it's installing um, a neuroimaging library, a machine learning library, a um, FNIRS library, which is the technique that um, we're looking at for this experiment and um, just a few other useful libraries. Uh, and then we would do the same for the R. So for R, we have another script, which also just installs um, the, the packages that we wanna use. And there's some packages that are already pre-installed on Swan, um, these are just extra ones that are not. Um, and so once we've done that, um, you would close off these and um, whoever's uploaded the data, so that straight away would then go back to their desk and check that that data looks okay. And so here we have, um, we normally run a script to, to check the data. And so you, we just run each of these in turn. So you can see the little blue line just represents um, the cell that we're about to run. And what I'll do is I'll start fresh. So I'll clear all outputs. So we're starting completely fresh here. Um, and we can see that it's a Python script, which is uh, up in the top right hand corner. And when I run a cell, it has a little star in it, which means it's currently running. You can also, um, when it's finished, it should have the number one appear, which means that was the first cell that was run. And then if I run the second one, um, it comes up with a number two. And so we're just gonna look at, you know, we're gonna pretend now that we just uploaded subject one's data and you just wanted to verify that it, it was uploaded correctly. Yep, so this is run and it's got a little three next to it and it's come up with a little warning that that's um, not relevant to what we're doing. So we push on and uh, we would actually load the data so now it's loading that data that we've just uploaded and it would report back um, that there was uh, the date of the measurement and um, the number of channels and the, the type of data it is. So this is FNIR's data, like I said, and that it was about 49 minutes. And so that whoever's done the measurements would be like, okay, that's a relief. Um, I was hoping that it was about a 50 minute recording. That's what was uploaded. And then we just have a bunch of other checks, which I'm just quickly going to run through. So you can also view, um, hopefully, where the sensors were placed on the head. So that's what this picture is. And you can you can check that there was triggers. So we always send information of when a, a, an event happened. So you might send a number one if you're tapping with the left hand and a number two if you're tapping with the right hand. And so this is, um, and then we can see that our conditions were randomized. So here is a plot of when all the events occurred. So we have time across the bottom and the events across the top. And we have three conditions and they seem to have occurred in a random order. And then we can check that the measurement looks, um, this is what the, the raw recordings look like. Um, and so we can see that there are a bunch of wiggly lines and that none of them look perfectly flat. So everything looks like it was plugged in and turned on, which is um, something you need to check. And then we normally also look as, as a last thing um, at our quality metric. So this is just a standard quality metric for our data where ideally everything is one, which means a great channel 
um, everything was plugged in correctly and zero means a terrible channel. So um, here, this, this recording is, is, is good to average. So, you know, there's a, a couple of not so good channels, but a couple of bad ones. And so this is normally then where we say the sort of data validation step stops and um, whoever's doing this part of the experiment can then send an email to everyone and say, yep, I uploaded the data and it looks great. And if you want, you can log on to Cloud Store or Swan and you can go check it and make sure that it was uploaded. Um, and the final thing we do then is, is generate some standard reports of that file. And so that's what I'll, so that's normally the next step. So um, once the, the data has been uploaded and this validation script is run by whoever is taking the measurements. So that could be an RA or a clinician or myself. Um, and I'll just try and go back a step. I think everyone's working in Melbourne at the moment from home. So the internet's a bit slow. Um, and so we could then also look, go into the subject's data and we can view this basic report. So um, sometimes we'll get everyone to, um, to share this report. So this is just a more detailed version that's generated um, within SWAN <coughs> and stored in Cloud Store for that file. So for that file, see some of the pictures that we saw before, but we also get a lot more detail and different figures um, to ensure that, that everything worked correctly. Moving on. So once you've uploaded the data, uh, the next thing we do is convert it to a standard format because the data that we get is <clears throat> is in a format that's made by that vendor and it might be different to you know a different experiment but you you want to use uh, some standard scripts and so we'll convert that to a standard data format and this this step um, can take quite a long time and so what i'll normally do is um, run this on my computer and then the sync tool will then sync all the, um, the modified files back up to, to Swan. And you can also just let it run for an hour on Cloud Store too. There we go, first time. Um, so this is the normally the next step, which um, anyone in the project might run. And this will just convert the data into a standard format and it will um, put it in the right folders. So we'll skip, we'll skip on. So the next thing we would do is, is a visual analysis of the experiment. So we might wanna just visually check that we get that response that I plotted before. <coughs> and so um, normally I would do these two middle steps. So um, the, the, this visual analysis and the statistical analysis. So this is a group level analysis, which would um, analyze all five people in this example experiment. And uh, so I'll just, um, run the entire script. So I'm going to hit restart kernel and run all cells and it's going to run this all from the top. And you can see it's a little star, so it's running. Um, so this is going to read each of the five people in this example experiment and it will uh, calculate their uh, average waveform per condition and then it's going to plot it um, below. And this is the sort of thing that we would put in a paper to sort of justify, okay, we, we are seeing the expected responses that we want. And um, so there you go. This is all being run uh, on Swan. Um, and so maybe sometimes uh, if you've got, sometimes when I'm uh, sort of supervising a project but not doing all the analysis myself, this is really handy because um, someone can make some changes to the script. They might wanna only look at two conditions rather than three conditions, or they might want to plot bigger or smaller. And if something goes wrong, um, I don't have to log onto their computer and install packages or try and debug things. We can all just log onto the same sort of service here. And we're, we're working with exactly the same, uh, we're all on the same baseline. And so any change that I make, they should see exactly the same. Um, so that's quite handy. And so if you scroll down, so that these are just um, the sort of figures that we generate. And then we might, uh, extract, for example, like the peak values in all these different conditions and different brain regions um, and export that for a, a statistical analysis later. Um, so this script was done in Python. Um, this is more of a visual analysis. If I'm doing more of a technical analysis, we would use this 
uh, a GLM style analysis and um, it works the same. So here um, it's analyzed five people and we would export um, the results as a CSV file um, for a statistical analysis in, in a follow-up step. Um, and so that's what's done here. So, um, so everything so far has been done in these Python notebooks. And, um, but I've found that uh, people that are in statistics prefer R. And so we've also got, the, um, I've done the, the final step here. So in, um, in an R notebook, just as an example. So you can see it's an R notebook because there's R on the top right hand corner. And so um, what, what might've happened is I've done the analysis and I've exported a set of key metrics per participant per condition. And then we might have a statistician on the project and they want to analyze that data. So they would then make uh, a statistics notebook um, such as this. And so we can run that from the top as well. So here um, we're loading all the R libraries, which we installed right at the beginning. And then you might load the, the data. And so we've um, loaded the data from that waveform analysis. And then we can check, I'll clear everything actually. So might be a bit clearer. So let's start again. So we load the libraries and then we load the data and then we can check the data was loaded correctly. So this is the, the summary data from the left hemisphere of participant one in this condition, the control condition, and this was the value. Um, we can also look at in, uh, the, there's, here's some, um, another, the bottom of the data frame. So this is participant five in this condition. Um, and then we can subset that data down to just the conditions that we're interested in. So maybe we're only interested in uh, looking at the contralateral side. So the opposite side of the head to where the tapping was done versus the ipsilateral side. So that's the same side of the head. Um, and then we can plot the data. So this is uh, all the different participants along the bottom and um, the size of the response and the color is if it was on the left or the right side of the head and it looks all a bit random. But what we expect is that if we plot it as contralateral and ipsilateral, the contralateral side should always be bigger. And that's what we see here. So I often get this error pop up that says the file was changed. Um, I always just hit overwrite. Um, and then um, you can do your statistics in R. So you might wanna do a um, linear mixed effects model and that should run now. I mean, in a real experiment, you would have um, more complicated models and you'd wanna validate your data and you might wanna look at the distribution of values and whatnot, but this is just a, a brief example. So here um, we have our statistical analysis and we can see that the ipsilateral hemisphere was significantly smaller than the contralateral. Um, and so that's the, sort of the different steps. And in this pretend experiment, I've been each person, but what's handy about this is that everyone can log on and each person can be in charge of one step. So you can have one person in charge of uploading and inspecting the measurements. You can have another person who um, is in charge of maybe step two and three and managing those notebooks. And then someone who's in charge of statistics might, might just do the statistics part, but you can all log on and see what the other people have done. And if you need to, you know, write a paper or give a presentation, um, you, you can check exactly what, what was done at each step. So that's how I kind of use Cloud Store. Thank you, um, Robert. That was amazing. Um, so great to see all the tools, all the tools in action. I want to know about impact because I want to be selfish from my own perspective. So how is this using this one in Cloud Store helping you collaborate more or, you know, achieve your, you know, research outcomes quicker, is it? Um, so I probably spend, well, before I use this, I spent a lot of time sitting in front of people's laptops or computers from different institutions, trying to install packages and libraries. And so um, I don't have to spend many, many hours doing that now. Um, that's probably the biggest impact for me is, is um, so we can, you can, you can restart your instance and install the packages fresh um, anytime you want. And um, so different institutions, sometimes you need admin rights to install 
a piece of software. So let's say that you have always um, done a data collection, but you're interested now in statistics. So we say, hey, yeah, we'll bring you on for the statistics part. We'll install R. And then, I mean, it's a two week process to get administration rights on the computer to install the packages and um, R Studio. So that, um, or perhaps you've got another project um, and you've installed, you know, you are, you have been using Python for a while and we've been using a particular package version. And then um, you join a new project and the technical person on that is like, oh, I'll install the new version for you. <laughs> and then all of a sudden that's broken our, our project. And so um, the other way it saves, saves me time is like I said, we, we all start on the same baseline with Cloud Store and, and we can start fresh each time and install the packages that we want on the same versions that we want and it all it all works so we don't um spend time debugging those sorts of issues we can actually look at the data instead awesome.